one of the most common for self-defense positions. It's called the, the technical stand-up. And it goes almost at the same time. In reality, it's, it's really just a diver. Right here. Right here. In this case, she bumped into it. And you could try to get up from there. Well, fake that you're going to get up from there. Every single blue belt should be known this. Because this is for high-level MMA. You're going to use this forever. You use against the cage, you use this to stand up on the floor. But in this case, you run out. Just doing this is a position that you sort of re actually compromise with my legs. What my legs going on? Get from there, I see starting to go for that. I start going for an arm. So you don't really need just something like this. You go for the arm bar, and you have to have you have to have this good awareness of of where to go. Do not force too much. It usually happens to white belts and blue belts that just try to go after somebody you may lost it already. You know? That hand on a collar works for so many things. But don't say I've never seen this one here right now. I try to get up and she started doing I'm pushing inside this is you know it's a loop joke. It happens happens a lot even at the highest level you got to just sideboard with this. The same position right here. Go in front of closed guards, just try to pass me where it's coming from me. I try to set up. The same setup here right now is it's gonna create positions for you to escape your hips and, and go someplace else or attack to the other side. There's a couple concepts that I think is important for you guys to know, and I have been telling about this you know, every time I go. You have to learn how to read. Even if you don't know much positions, you have to learn how to read levels. This is one level. Right? So if I'm here, I've got both knees on the ground. This is this is much harder, much easier for it to attack my arm. If I'm here on a different level, on a common stand level here, some different stuff. If he try to go for here and I'm standing up, it's gonna be much harder for here, you know, to try to get chokes from here without exposing the arms, triangles, arm bars here. It's gonna be hard. But if she does not read my levels or distance right from here, she grabs the back, and I'm down here. Even if it's not on the same level, I'm, I'm creating distance on it. And if she does not move in distance, or I move first, it's just totally done. And I cut the angle, I cut the corner. This is some, there's concepts that you have to know as a blue belt. Levels, distance, and, and angles. It's really hard for you to start really actually reading people without that. Those concepts you have to know, you gotta start reading, oh, she, she got up, she got up, oh, she moved back. Oh, she cut the corner here right now, she'll go back in distance again. All this is important for me. Sometimes you pass the guard. I got from here, if I change my angle, not change my distance, it's hard to get out. Not from here. Just keep it, I'm just moving a little bit of distance. I've got the current much easier. Just because he's trying to push, trying to grab my leg here on the floor. Simple like that. It's just got to move. Move this way to replace. I'm on the other side. She moved this way. He went out. From there, the game started. But it's a good concept for you to understand. This is important for you to understand. Like we say, we try to show positions is going to reach your game. This is really a puzzle. When you start reading, but I think I think for for you guys to take something really, I mean, be more important for you to go from blue to purple belt. I think it's for you to read those guys. What did they think? What did they think as a black belt? What does it take for a blue belt to go to purple? Because each one of those guys have a concept on it. He had elaborated here, can he can go. All day long, you probably have that, you have from there. I'm gonna let you guys hear something from there instead of disposition. Yeah, for me, I mean, it was different. I think the blue to purple used to do fighting by strategy or a game plan. Because I know some, I know some blue belts will have like one black belt of a move. I've seen that sometimes, they have one move, like they do already have one move, but they don't have a game plan or a strategy. Purple belts always have some kind of game plan or some kind of strategy. Now, get better to have more than one strategy and we have more than one game plan, but you want to have a game plan. Whatever it is, it could be both our triangle. I don't suggest it, but that could be your game. It could work for you actually. It could be kicked down to uh, could be wait for them to go guilty and then get on top of the squad, whatever. Uh, for me it was different, it was different. So find something that 
you get one A plant, you eventually get a B and a C plant, but I think the A plant is strategy. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. So developing offense, getting the blueprint, getting the blueprint to the
can ever approach and think that this is I got just what I think. No. It is the singles moving in block. Competition team moves in block. For me to go to for me to go to purple, we have to have a pretty good blue belt to, to, to replace me. The guy on top has to go to brow, and the guy on the brow has to go to black, and everybody has to win in everything. That's what you said. One thing I really learned from Blue Belt, there's two things that really was important to me, I think he changed it. And one day Carlson came to me and said, Lord, I'm not going to pull guard anymore. I was one of the only guys from Carlson Grace team as De La Hiva. That was because they used to train De La Hiva a lot. Working the guard. They said, you're never going to pull guard anymore. Now you're going to be just working on top. You've got to build up a, a game. You've got to learn to take down, which is... For those that are starting right now, taking downs is so important for self-defense. You have to learn it. You do have to learn it. And like it or not, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of wrestling and judo. I really believe that it works a lot for self-defense. You know, it just for enrichment itself, you've got to learn it. You know, everything. But the big transformation for me was drills. Drills. Instead of really just doing a warm-up, you want to do a condition, do the drills. Drills was something that was created way after my time, but if we knew that, it would be less injury. So my time was just for hot. It was just training. It was three hours training in a high level professional competition, and it really not. I don't think I, I, I came from that as much. You're always talking. He said, he mentioned today that the technology evolved, and if you do not evolve with the technology, you still throwing sticks at your, you know, at your enemy. That's wrong. You've got to evolve with that. Drills was one of the most important things about that. And, and be patient. Not a thing, too, that it seems like, man, I'm, who am I to speak of around this guy here right now, but you've got to show up in the next day. You're going to find millions of reasons on not to show up as a blue belt. Millions. You've got to show up in the next day. You want a blue belt? Show up in the next day. Suck it up and show up. That's what it is. You're going to get beat up a lot. You're going to lose a lot as part of game. And again, even if you're the best in the world, ask him, the best in the world, and at one point, guess what? You're going to get old. It's going to tap again. That's it. So you better suck it up. You better be happy that you find a reason to be here. You know? That's what it is. Questions for those guys? Somebody gave me a mission to a supervisor. I don't know why, but... <laughs> Pete coming over here. Questions for them about that? Let's go, guys. Some questions. Not every day we have, like, these guys line up here to answer questions. There you go. We're talking about inspirations for progress and making transitions. What about obstacles? Can you repeat what the you question? Ask? We couldn't uh, hear. He said, what's one of the biggest obstacles of continuing to progress? <laughs> And probably one that everybody knows right now is just getting injured. You're just going to get injured. And uh, as the boy was talking, I had, I hurt my back one time when Dean and I were like blue belts. And um, I hurt my back and I couldn't, I could do a lot of movements, but I couldn't do this right here for whatever reason. That's the one thing I couldn't do. So what that meant was I couldn't do OPA to escape anything. And I just could only do this. And so for about nine months, the only thing I could do was elbow escape. And guess what? I got a freaking good elbow escape after nine months. <laughs> so I, you probably heard me say it before, you get injured, go do what you can. And that's the same with jujitsu. Like, you know, like my fingers jacked up right now. Okay, tape it up and see what you can do and work through it. You know, like you're just gonna be injured. That's the way it is. So do what you can. That's one big obstacle to jujitsu. And if you train like an idiot, it's an even bigger obstacle because now you're not tapping, you're getting hurt, you're being a knucklehead. So be careful. Having a hater girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Negative influences, right? So another thing too is, uh, you know, I swear, when I was, I wouldn't say this too much, but if you, if you tell someone you don't know very well, maybe someone not super close to, I want to become a champion. You just like, really? You think you can do that? Like, you know how much hard work that is. You think you're gonna get usually negative feedback. As Arnold Schwarzenegger says, don't listen to the naysayers. Like the people that say no. How about I want to be a doctor? You know how long it's gonna be a doctor? Eight years. Like it's all usually negative, and sometimes it's subconscious. But yeah, be careful. You, it's just negative energy. You don't share, or or share it. Don't care. But you having negative energy, let's say negative influence on you. 
You guys you know talk. What? You want to be a doctor? Take it 20 years. Only if you show up. If you don't show up, you're never going to be a doctor. You're never going to be a champion. You're never going to be. You're never going to be a champion. You never show up. You just got to punch the clock. Don't find excuses. Just punch the clock. Just go. And you're going to lose. And you've got to suck it up. It's not going to be fun. Guess what? Next day you're there and you find a reason why you broke the broke the mold and your mind's already in a different set. You know you can beat yourself. That's why I think it's important. Yeah, um, like I said, just assuming you kind of already know how to do something. Uh, that weekend that we learned about the cross collar jokes, half the room was full of black belts. And that's what we worked on the whole weekend and everybody's joke was better after. These were people who owned schools and everybody was there to learn. Everybody got better. But you have to be willing to, again, show up and be willing to retool something. Um, so the sport evolves and there's more than one way to do everything. I, it's not everybody agrees with that. Some people are like, there's this one way that you do it. But I think that can stunt your jujitsu also. Like, Dean does a really different foot lock, but obviously it works. So you have to kind of find what's going to work for you and be willing to Bigger obstacles, uh, obstacle was uh, money and uh, negative energy, right? So um, I grew up, I was born and raised in Sao Paulo, but I moved to Northeast when I was 13. My parents were like, not poor, but they, they worked really hard to put food at home. So I had to get money, go to the gym, and use the buzz money so I could eat during the day while I was training. At this time, it was judo. So in Brazil, like, if you don't have like a rich family, if, you, if your parents or you don't have a good job, like, you have to work your ass off to be able to make money and help your parents to have money at home. So uh, I had to go to school, my brother was working, my mom worked, my dad was working. So the money that I supposed to get back in the bus home, I used to take a ride in the truck, in the back of the truck, holding the ropes, like for 20 miles to be able to get back home. And I was like 14 years old. So like that plus the negativity of friends and the, like telling me like I would not made it, I would never win a tournament, yada, 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 yada. Then when I was in high school, I dropped out. I believed my dream. I went to the gym every day, all day long, and here I am. So consistent, you gotta believe. If you don't believe, you're not achieving. That's the big obstacle, so. I got, I got a question. You guys talked about strategizing. I think somebody, I don't know if you use the word strategizing from blue to purple. Can you get a little bit more specific in that? What as far I think as specifically was, what makes sense to you? Now, what a reason I had a wrestling background to take someone down and go for foot locks makes sense right away for me. But I always had this idea like, um, this, it's a cliche, the best defense is a great offense. And the thought behind that is, if I'm attacking you all the time, I don't have to work on my defense. Yeah, but you will be attacked. I know I'll be attacked so much that I prefer the opposite. If my defense is so good, and I'm confident in my defense, like relatively safe, I will now attack you all the time. And that's, that's my style. I'll put myself in bad submissions on purpose, not because I want to get submitted, because I want to earn my escape and then submit the other guy. And I always stop it in matches like, that guy's, what's it, Lemme yep. the That guy had the best guilty in the world, 2003, and I was like, I kind of want to escape the guilty. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Like, be, be, be careful, it's guilty. I was like, I want to escape right now. You know, so so in the, in the midst of doing that, you get yourself to where you can be a, a counterfighter. That was me, to where my defense was, became so good at that point where I was like a 17 year period I didn't have for 17 years. Just kind of like more than the average. <laughs> so, so, uh, in competition, yeah, in competition, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> so that was me. It, it could be, it could be, and by the way, your strategy maybe is to work on a bad area of yourself, it could be to open up something else. But let's say your strategy is okay, I'm gonna wait for the shooting. Okay, I have a good guilty, let's bait them to shoot me. I'll swallow for a guilty. That's one strategy that's a limited, but that could work in your game. It could be full guard, go for triangle, it could be, it could be working a double leg, kick down, pass the guard, it could be whatever. So find something where you can build upon it like a tree branch out. 
that's what I meant. So just find a strategy that makes yeah. sense. For me, it was broken my defense to where I put myself in bad situations and I will counter my opponent. When you were a blue belt, did you do different, like with white and blue belts? Did you strategize? Like, and then when you went purple, brown, and black, when you roll with them, did you go about it differently? Usually, people with less experience, you can like try new things yeah. out on them. Someone your own level, you have to work on your strategy. Someone higher, you're working on your defense. That's a general rough. So you get to work on, you have to work on all different people. Uh, you know, less, equal, and higher. Strategy, survival, which you have to, <laughs> you're tired, you have to work on your survival. And then also you can try all the new cool stuff out of someone who doesn't know as much. Thank you. Much. And 
is you. And you see you being a little more humble about yourself and facing that experience of speaking in front of people and caring so much about what you think about us here right now. Maybe this guy has an accent. Oh, I don't care anymore. Yeah, it's too old for this. But you just will help me a lot. This helped me to lose. Lose was really important for me, particularly because you just suck it up and you come back in the next day and you, you win. You didn't win. How bad it was, you think it was, how much butterfly you had it, and you lost in 10 seconds. Guess what? If you back again the next day, or back in the next competition, raise yourself up here. A million times. And Laborio just said no one remembers, right? Well, I saw uh, Lovato Jr. And I went up to him, you know, I hadn't seen him in a long time. And I, was, I went up to him, I was like, hey, bro, yeah, it's good to see you. He's like, yeah, man, I love what you've been doing. I said, yeah, man. I said, yeah, man, I remember I competed against you, man. You beat me. And you were like 17 at the time. And he goes, I beat you twice. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, Lovato Jr. Damn, no kid. Freaking topped me out. That was awesome. <laughs> Let's go get him right now. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do love competition. Like I haven't competed since 2020. It was busy, but um, I've been competing since I was 14, like five, six times a year. Um, I love like, talking about competition. I got goosebumps. I love. I love the challenge. I love the adrenaline. I love to beat them, beat people up, put the guys in my division, and it's just kind of like I'm gonna mess you up, kill me. Like I love. I love it. Like, uh, it's just kind of like, but again, it's, it's just you against yourself, you know what I mean? I'm not from anything to anybody, that's, that's just me, with me. That's why I, li I like, I like to train, I like the process, I like the process of training, diet, like, you know, uh, sleeping, everything. I like everything about competition. I, I really believe that there's something on, there's sort of, confidence that breaks your competition that really is about knowing that even if you lose you're going to continue yep. you can't, you can't keep it on going it doesn't matter what's the result of us there you can't learn from it 100 percent but if you don't quit it's just if you punch the clock you're going to be there you can't if you win you win but if you stop right there because you lost it should not be doing this, but you're going to be quitting out basically everything that is important in your life. Competition teaches that. I think that's it. You guys stand up. You're going to get the open man.